Hello, this is a tutorial video on how to solve the Rubik's Cube. Now I'm sure many of you that already know how to solve the Rubik's Cube use what's called the layer by layer method or the beginner method. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to solve the Rubik's Cube in under a minute. Using this method and practicing enough will, I can almost guarantee, help you solve the Rubik's Cube in under one minute. Solving the Rubik's Cube with this method will not get you a world record, but it will help you solve the cube faster and it's a great stepping stone to help you solve a world record time. It uses the same method only a little bit simplified. So when you learn the faster methods, if you choose to, you don't have to learn anything new. You basically build upon what you will learn from this tutorial. For the purpose of this tutorial, I'll be using two Rubik's cubes to show you how to solve. Each scramble is unique and therefore each scramble has different patterns. So using two Rubik's Cubes will help me show you more of these patterns. The first step in using this method is to get the cross on one layer. This is the exact same way you get the cross in the layer by layer method. However, I will be showing you some shortcuts to help you get the cross faster. The second step is to get the first two layers of the cube completed. Now I'm going to show you a major shortcut that will reduce your time. Instead of solving just the corner, we're going to be solving the corner and its corresponding edge at the same time. That way you solve the first layer and the second layer simultaneously, which will cut your solve times down. The next two steps are getting this cross on the top layer after completing the first two layers. Then the step after that is getting that top color to cover the entire up face, like so. The next step after that is to solve all of the corner pieces and then solving all of the edge pieces which will get you the solved cube now let's go how let's go over how to do each of these steps the first step in solving the Rubik's cube is to get the cross on one layer now there's many ways to do this but a few pointers are when you're first starting to solve fast it's important that your brain recognizes color patterns. So to help your brain recognize color patterns faster, for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to start on the same color for both cubes and for the rest of the solve. I'm going to be starting on the white face. Now the reason I start on the white face, again, is to help your brain recognize something faster and so you have a comfort zone. Ideally, when you solve a world record time, you start on the face that works the best for that particular scramble. However, when you're first learning, this may not be the best option because that is one more challenge that maybe you're not ready to face yet. In this tutorial, you'll still be able to solve the Rubik's Cube quickly without having to worry about different color variations. A quick hint for solving the cross. In the layer by layer method, you're taught to solve the cross on the top layer. And then later on, you're taught to flip the cube upside down and continue solving. So to make things simpler, it would be a lot easier and time consuming to start the solve with the cross on the bottom layer since you're going to flip it over anyway. So practicing solving the cross on the bottom layer is a good way to help improve your times. That way you cut out the unnecessary flip halfway through your solve. So let's start on the cross. First thing you need to do, just like in the layer by layer method, is get the cross like so. Now in the layer by layer method you are taught to do this by some people. You're taught to put the piece on the opposite end on the opposite end match it up with its the secondary color and then rotate it to the bottom. Although this works it's not always the fastest way to do things. For example if you have a piece that is incorrectly on the top Putting it in from the top is not the best way to do it. You need to be able to know how to put it in from the side, for example. From the side. So, how exactly do we do this? <laughs> you can start by looking during our inspection, because every time you solve the cube, you should be doing a 15 second inspection where you don't move any pieces, and you just glance at the cube so you know where to begin before your time starts. I notice I already have a red and white here ready to go. 
So I can go ahead and rotate it over here, but I'm not going to do that just yet because I want to know if there's any other pieces I can solve at this moment. Now, although it doesn't look like it, I can solve this orange piece by moving it into this bottom layer by using what's called a relative position. If you notice, the red is opposite of orange. So if the red-white is here, the opposite is here, which is directly above this piece. So by rotating it up, orange is now opposite of red, which is true. Red is opposite of orange. So now, when I give it a rotation, I have two pieces solved now. That was done in about four moves, which is a lot faster. Using this relative cross, you can solve many of the other edge pieces. Another example that shows how the relative cross position is faster is this position right here. This piece is the blue-white piece, and it's incorrectly in the wrong placed in the cross. Normally, what you would have to do is move it to the top layer and do some sort of algorithm that puts it in from the side. But we don't want to do that. That takes too many moves. In this case, we're going to use the relative cross position. <laughs> and I'm going to do it in three moves. One, two, three. And you'll notice it's solved. Now, how did I do that? Well, in the relative cross, the red is to the right of the blue. So what is to the if blue is here and red's here, that's to the right. Now, for example, to get this into the cross, I can rotate it straight down. So by rotating the, the cross layer, if I put the blue here, the blue is indeed to the left, and the, right, the red is to the right of the blue, just like here. Blue, and you take a right, and you get red. Blue, take a right, and you get red. So this is correctly solved. So now all I have to do is realign it. And that takes three moves. One, two, three. The last edge is a typical example. You have it on the top layer, and all you have to do is align it and rotate it straight down. These are some of the easier cases. But again, let me go over some more examples of the relative cross and how that can help you solve the Rubik's Cube faster. Let me switch over to my other cube here, and let's find some more examples of the relative cross. Now, immediately, I can tell I have a blue lined up here. Now, where is blue? Right here. Blue's opposite of green. So, I realize that all I have to do is rotate the blue, and now the green is opposite of blue. Now, although the green's already matched up, this same thing could be true if it was on a different face. Like this face, for example. The green is here, and it needs to be here, like so. So we're going to make the blue opposite the green, which is over here. So move the blue, and the opposite is the green, so we rotate it down. And now these two are opposites of each other, which is true. Blue is opposite green. Now we can use another relative cross position. <laughs> green is to the left of orange. So orange has to be to the right of green. So if we put the orange here by rotating straight down, up, we need it to be to the left. So we pull our green over, and we put our orange up. Now the green and the orange are in the relative position to each other. Green, red, green, red. So all I have to do is rotate and they are solved. And then we got lucky here and we have another red. Now those are some basic examples of the relative cross, but many of the cases are identical and you just need to learn what face you're using with and the color scheme that works best with that face.